Hey guys, what's up, and welcome back to the Rebuild series. So, we're already on episode 8. We're making some good progress. Now, the first thing I should probably let you guys know is, unlike the previous few episodes where we had, like, a big item that we're saving for at the end of the episode, this is not going to be the case. Um, I still would like to re-get tier 90 range. It would be really nice, because for right now, I've... I've kind of forfeited being able to do next just because I have the scythe and although you can melee next and it's completely fine it's just much easier to have range and it's also much easier to have the max guild portal so I might just wait until then but the nice thing about the scythe is it makes it much easier to do Araxi or at least I prefer melee Araxi that's my favorite style of killing it um, I'm not a huge range Araxi fan at least not without a, a noxious longbow um, that does help quite a bit but we're not there yet so we did get an effigy at Araxi and you will be seeing quite a few Araxi kills I'm trying to go for a leg um, or at least the start of one with the first leg piece because we don't have any pieces yet in the bank if I do get one of the hilts they're technically not hilts they're just a part of a weapon not really a hilt at all considering it's like you know the, the string of a bow for the noxious longbow or the, the tip of the staff but whatever the hilts if we get one of those, um, I won't be able to do anything with it because I can't afford a spider leg, but I might just like hold on to one until I get a leg done. And then it would be a bit of extra profits, or at least I know the scythe and the bow are a pretty good profit. I'm not sure about the staff. It's not a whole lot. But anyway, you know, it would be nice to get one regardless. So, for a while there, the rotation was path 2 and 3 open, so I was trying to get as much Araxor done as possible. And, and yeah, I've talked a lot in the past about how this is not my favorite boss, and it still isn't, but... I cannot deny the fact that it is very good money, so it's absolutely worth doing if you're someone like me that is looking to get back all your tier 90 weapons as fast as possible, and hey, if it works out, if we get a web and we get a spider leg done in the next, I don't know, 100 kills or so, we could just make a noxious longbow from scratch, and then I wouldn't even have to worry about buying one, and it would be really awesome if things just worked out that way. So I've also been doing quite a few tasks. I did get my 50th task done here, which was a nice boost of, I think, 50 extra reaper points, which is one-sixth of the way to a Hydrix all on itself. So that's going to really help make some extra money. I got a steadfast skill drop from Rune Dragons. I've been really nice. For a while, I thought I was going to go super dry on these because I was over 500 kills and I had yet to have any of these uh, drops. And then I got two steadfast skills in like the last 200 kills from Rune Dragons. So... Apparently my luck there isn't so bad, and uh, the step fast skills are like 20 mil each for some reason. They're extremely expensive, so it's really nice to have those. And um, I'm also trying to work quite a bit on the Zami. I do have Greater Demons Preferred, of course, uh, just because I still do not have that pet. And this is probably the best bossing task that Morvran assigns. Or the Dagonoths are pretty good too if you're also looking out for that Dagonoth pets. There's three of the Dagonoth pets, of course. So you're going to have to kill a lot of the Dagonoth Kings of the one if you want all of those boss pets, which, you know, I still have aspirations of getting possibly one of these days. This is loot from, I think, one hour of Corporal Beast, and we did really well. That is after split 5.2 mil from one hour of Corp. So we got pretty lucky with the Onyx Bolts drops there because that is a significant amount of money for such an easy boss to kill. Here's another Elite Clue Scroll, and as always, it's going to turn into 177k, which seems to be about the average. A while ago, the average was more around the area of 300, maybe 400k per clue, but unfortunately, seed prices have dropped a lot, and that's really hurt the clues because you get like a lot of U seeds and and dwarf weed seeds from clue scrolls, so that's lowered the average price of them quite a bit. There's another task done at Arbital. I already have mini Kriara, or uh, the Kriara pet. I forget what the exact title of it is. I already have that one, and this was a funny clue. I got an entire Mystic Staff set from one clue scroll to air, water, earth, and fire, and a rune 2-age, and rune plate legs G, just to add on to it. So it's just a very strange clue. It wasn't, you know, worth a whole bunch of money, or it wasn't particularly exciting, but the loot was weird. Another rune dragon task done. No drops were gained this task, but I'm showing it off just because you gotta remember every single time I get a rune dragon's task, that's about 5 mil profit, just from the standard drops, so... Another good amount of money made there. Here was a Draconic Visage from Celestials. I got my first Celestial Dragons task. Now, the funny thing with Celestials is they're one of the most common tasks you can get from Morvran, and I had not had a task of these since 120 Slayer. I did take them off my prefer list, because for a while I was just trying to farm as many Dagonoth King tasks as possible, and Zami tasks as possible. Got another drop, which was weird. I just, very, very good luck this particular Celestials task. But the point is, I like Celestials, and it was weird how long it took to get another task of them, considering how common they're supposed to be. 
here's another clue. I think this was a hard. I opened the lead by accident and forgot to record it. Um, or maybe I opened the hard by accident. Anyway, I opened one of the clues by accident, and um, the loots weren't very good anyway, so I wouldn't worry about it. Here I was just selling off some more my more valuable drops with the drop tab. The majority of the drop tab is still going to be kept safe until... Well, probably until we get that main hand essential crossbow back. But I'm selling off some of the more valuable drops because I would like to speed up my adventure training a little bit through Slayer. And at the moment, I have my scythe and my tetsu augmented. And I was like, you know what? Let's get another suit of armor and augment it just so we can get some more invention training while doing Slayer. So I sold everything. I set fast scale. Nice 20.7 mil. Those are just bank when you get them. And here's the purchase for this episode. Virtus rope top and Virtus legs. I'm augmenting both of those because every single task that I don't melee through Slayer, I typically mage. I don't think there's any task that you have to range. Well, I guess ascension members, but that's about it. And, um... Uh, I'm sticking with the Royal Crossbow for range, so I'd like to avoid range tasks as much as possible, uh, for the time being anyway. And here I'll just show some of the frustration of trying to augment these things. I went through, like, so many hand cannons, I think seven or eight hand cannons. I just kept trying to get Crackling, because it's a really good perk, and put it in my Virtus. But no, every time, ultimatums, over and over and over and over again, and I just kept getting ultimatums. And... I was told by someone that ultimatums is a more common perk than crackling, so it's not like a 50-50 chance. Um, I don't know if there's any truth to that. Maybe I was just getting really unlucky, but I went through so many armor gizmos, eventually just gave up and said, screw this, because uh, I was running out of money. As you can see in this clip here, I have 300k left. That's because I spent all my money on freaking hand cannons and stuff to disassemble to make armor gizmos. But anyway, hard mode Zami trip. That's a good way to make money. We got ourselves a gown, and um, that's like 2 mil, but we have to split it, so it's more like 1 mil. So, after 2 hours of Zami, oh, Zamorak Hilt was also obtained. I was really trying to go for this pet, just because my Zami KC is um, almost 3,000 now, so my drop rate's pretty good. And this is all the loot, post-split. So, 2 hours of Zami, 6 mil. 3 mil an hour, of course, I'm spending a little over a mil an hour in charges, so... Around 2 mil an hour profit at Harm Old Zami. That's really not bad. And that's only with the one drop as well. And you can definitely get more lucky than that. So I finally did another Beastmaster. It took a while for me to, you know, get around to this and kill another Beastmaster. And I had just a, a reset waiting for a few days completely unused. And that was kind of a waste. But whatever. Finally got the kills. So that's like a nice 1.5 mil probably profit around there somewhere. That's usually about what you get from Beastmaster. And then Yakumaru. You know, I'm not there yet. But... I will hopefully soon be killing Yakimaru as well, and that's like 3 mil a kill, roughly, so that's going to be a nice bit of profit once we finally start doing that. So here's another day of Rexor. I put off a Rexor because Path 2-3 ended, so I was like, you know, I wasn't really feeling the minions with melee, but I tried it, and it turns out it's really not so bad. It is definitely slower than Path 2-3 because you have to deal with the minions, and that slows down the kills by a lot, but it wasn't that bad, and uh, got some more... KC done, I guess. Progress towards that base pet. Progress towards getting the next leg piece. So, unfortunately, there was no drops from Raxi during this episode. I uh, I tried my best, but unfortunately, no kills, no significant lootations were obtained, sadly. And I died. It's been, like, you know, a few hundred kills since the last died at Raxi. But what happened is I forgot my portent of life. And when that happens, and when you get cleaved, well, this is what happens. And luckily it's a pretty short run back, so you don't lose any charges on armor or don't have to pay death the ridiculous fee he charges for the small convenience of getting your stuff back. But another Greater Demons task from Morvran. Morvran's been a buddy lately. He's been assigning a ton of Greater Demons and a lot of really cool tasks like Glacors. Um, just tasks that are fun. And here's the loot from that entire Greater Demons task. We got one Steam Battle Staff, and that was it. So for whatever reason, I have really bad luck when I go solo Zami. Hard mode Zami, typically get a drop when I'm with other people, and then you have to split it, which kind of sucks, but solo Zami, drops just don't happen. I also happen to be on a Reaper task at the same time, so that was really nice. And we're also siphoning the Tetsu, and that's going to get us two invention levels, all the way up to 86. The next set of unlocks is at 87, so I'm not going to, you know, unlock anything, but I think at 87 there's another charge drain rate reduction, so that's going to be really nice to get. And we're going to finish off here with two clues. I was like, come on! Ending the episode with 100k loot. Well, we have a reroll, and it is still 100k, so didn't really improve at all on that reroll, and, you know, some more crappy clues, but one day a die is going to happen, and 
we're going into the bank here so i'm going to be showing my drops tab and my gear tab and my clue scroll tab and those are pretty much the only three tabs that change between episodes the rest are just you know my supplies skill and stuff um stuff that isn't really going to change for the most part now god wars dungeon 2 should be coming out sometime tomorrow and i'm hoping to learn how to god wars dungeon 2 i hope it won't take too long but i'll be doing my best and i should be uploading quite a bit of videos related to that there'll be some of that inside the rebuild series but there will also be um some of that outside as well just like checking out god wars dungeon 2 letting you guys know what that's all about so i'm looking forward to that hopefully you guys are too so until then i'll see you guys next time have a good one and farewell